What are the differences between cash credit and overdraft? We'll see in this video. At first, let us understand why these credit facilities are sanctioned to borrowers. See, both cash credit and overdraft are credit facilities given to business entities for funding the working capital gap. So we may have a question, what is this working capital gap? Let us understand with these numbers. Let's say a business entity is having a current asset of 100 lakhs and those current assets are already funded by other current liabilities to the extent of 40 lakhs. It means there is a gap of 60 lakhs that requires funding. So that gap is what we call as working capital gap. And this gap can be funded by borrowers and for the balance, they can approach banks for working capital funding. When borrower funds this gap, we call it as margin. And when they approach the bank for this working capital funding, it will be either in the form of cash credit or overdraft when they are availed for short term period. Okay, so both these facilities are assessed for filling this working capital gap. They are basically short term in nature. It means generally they are sanctioned for one year period and they will be subjected to annual renewal as well. Every year the facility will be reviewed and it will be renewed for another one year. So these are all the commonalities between cash credit and overdraft. But yes, there are differences. The first difference lies in disbursement itself. In cash credit, disbursement will not happen just like that because the disbursable amount will be calculated based on something known as drawing power, which is derived using the information available in stock and data statement submitted by the borrower. Okay, so the disbursement in cash credit is going to be very stringent and it is absolutely based on drawing power, which can be altogether different from sanction limit. So always it works like this. Disbursement will be the amount derived as per drawing power and this will be arrived by comparing the advance value with the sanction limit. If advance value is less than the sanction limit, then only advance value will be considered as drawing power. And if sanction limit is less than advance value, then in that case, only sanction limit will be considered as drawing power. So in that way, it is very stringent. Whereas in overdraft, it is a simple vanilla case. Here, whatever the amount sanctioned as overdraft will be disbursed in one shot to the current account of the borrower. Difference number two, this is about periodic monitoring. Cash credit facility will be subjected to periodic monitoring. Every month borrower is expected to submit a stock statement. In some banks or in some credit facilities, it can be even on quarterly basis. But at periodical intervals, this stock statement have to be submitted to the bank and every month bank will fix drawing power. So in this way, this account is periodically reviewed by the bankers. But in case of overdraft, since the entire amount is already dispersed in one shot, there is no question of monthly review, monthly stock statement. Okay, so there is no periodic monitoring except for the annual renewal that takes place. Difference number three is with regard to security. Cash credit facility will have two types of security in most of the cases, primary security and collateral security. The primary security will be basically the assets created out of cash credit facility itself, which can be combination of inventory, receivables and other current assets. It means they typically take entire current assets as primary security and to safeguard themselves, they will also insist on collateral securities, which can be other tangible or intangible assets of the business entity or even personal assets of the borrowers or guarantors. But in case of overdraft, there will be no primary security. The entire facility will be either unsecured or it will be secured against collateral securities, which may be the properties of business entity or it can be personal properties of borrowers or guarantors. Fourth difference is with regard to NOC, that is no objection certificate. Let's say a business entity has already availed cash credit facility by giving its current asset as primary security. Now it has approached another bank also to avail additional cash credit facility. So basically it is getting into multiple banking arrangement. In that case, for the new bank which is coming into the multiple banking arrangement, 
also this current asset have to be shared it means they have to go into peripassive charge arrangement on primary security and this peripassive charge cannot be created unless and until the existing bank gives no objection certificate that may not be the case with overdraft if an entity has already availed overdraft they have availed it on the basis of collateral security and now if they are availing additional overdraft facility with a different bank against a different asset then no noc is required just an intimation is sufficient to the existing bankers because here no permission or no ceding of charge is required so these are all the broad differences between cash credit and overdraft facility if you find this lecture useful please do not forget to like follow comment and share are you aspiring to become a credit manager in a bank or nbfc do you wish to know what are the roles and responsibilities of a credit manager then our ebook will help you it's a ebook which comes with reading material as well as video lectures and it's absolutely free and it will be a career guidance material for you to get you a copy just come and see m i'll share the link with you